Hey what is up guys, welcome back to the channel and well, welcome back to something a little bit different. Now Gran Turismo 7 we know is a game absolutely shrouded in controversy uh, right since its release. However, it kind of got me thinking, you know, at the end of the day for everything that's kind of gone off with this game, the core game to me is still very much Gran Turismo and it's still very enjoyable. In fact, I would go out of my way to say that Gran Turismo 7, the core gameplay experience, is some of the best racing I think I've ever had within a racing game. You know, I absolutely love this series. I have a long history with this series. And in all honesty, with the position I'm in today of kind of mainly covering Gran Turismo, I kind of thought, you know, let's go back and actually tell you, well, my history and my story and why i really love gran turismo you know i get a lot of you guys seem to think i absolutely just hate this series or i'm a forza fanboy i've heard that one before um no in all honesty my complaints about this game come from a place of actually really having a lot of history with this game and caring about this product and i would do, love nothing more than to see gran turismo 7 back on that top step of the podium so with the introduction out of the way, let's go on a little journey all the way from Gran Turismo 1 to Gran Turismo 7 to find out really why I absolutely love and adore Gran Turismo. Now my Gran Turismo journey actually doesn't begin with Gran Turismo at all. So a few months prior to December 1999, I'm currently around one of my mother's friend's house and they have a Sega uh, Genesis, I believe, with a very obscure racing game on it. I believe, to this day, I cannot remember the name of it. I believe it was something like Lotus Challenge. Um, we're talking like a really old game at this point. And I actually begin to play it. And this is the first ever game I actually play. It's obviously a racing game, very kind of in line with something like Outrun and that kind of style of racer. And I absolutely loved it. I remember it, you know, playing it for hours that day um, before obviously, you know, never really touching a console for a few months after that. Then December 1999 rolls around and it's Christmas day and five-year-old me goes downstairs to open their presents and well I had a little bit of a surprise. I had a PlayStation 1, I believe it was the Slim console, um, neatly packaged away so it was a PS1 um, in a little box and I open it up and to my surprise there's a few games in there as well. One of which being Gran Turismo 2. So like you did back then, you hook it up to your big fat telly and uh, yeah, essentially you go and put the disc in and play. Now it came on two discs and I thought this was pretty much the norm for the console. It turns out it was just that big of a game. Uh, they spread it onto two discs, both an arcade and the simulation disc. So essentially Gran Turismo 2 just became my childhood. For many years I played that game almost every night after school, on weekends and such. I just absolutely fell in love with it. And uh, from there it kind of grew my addiction to cars. Um, so yeah, it was really strange because for that whole time I didn't have an official memory card for my PS1. Um, so I'd have to start all over again each time I played. I remember very much, you know, finding a way to uh, get, I guess, purchase a really cheap car that was really quick for the early racers. Even at the age of five, I believe it was the Mercury Cougar um, that I jumped in and then started, you know, absolutely dominating the early racers with, um, as well as I think picking a Mitsubishi Colt as well to begin with. Um, I'm pretty sure it was that one, um, or that might have been Gran Turismo 3. Uh, but yeah, either way, I remember just absolutely spending hours, you know, playing this game and having to start all over again and never ever getting tired of it. And like I said, from there, I actually started of my obsession with cars because i remember going through all the manufacturers learning all the manufacturers in the game to the point it's you know five six years old i could point out any car on the road tell you exactly the brand and the exact make of car i mean this was a very big game i was like i believe there's like 700 plus cars in the game on a ps1 disc with a ton of tracks like it was absolutely mind-blowing so gran turismo 2 was my real introduction as well as only a few months later because i absolutely loved the second one i picked the original gran turismo up and while that was very much more limited um and there was kind of less to it than gran turismo 2 um, i still remember playing the absolute you know 
I guess hours into that one as well. Um, yeah, so Gran Turismo 1, Gran Turismo 2 on the PlayStation 1 was really where it began and kind of began to fuel this obsession with cars. From there was sort of, you know, going to track events. I remember um, even, you know, on weekends, if I used to stay at my grandparents' house, I used to take my PlayStation 1 with me. And every Sunday morning, myself and my granddad, who were... Uh, Sadly, a couple of years ago, passed away from leukemia. Um, we did used to boot it up in the morning and play split screen on Gran Turismo 2. And whilst you know, I always used to beat him, it was just you know an absolute joy. So I have floods of memories from those first two games, and it really just kick-started you know where I am now. So a few years pass and Gran Turismo 3 comes out. However, at the time, both myself and my parent did not know that essentially this was only on PlayStation 2. So one day she goes out to purchase it for me and surprise me when I get home from school and sadly it's not on that console. However, this is where another bit of a racing franchise gets introduced to me with Ridge Racer Type 4, another absolute all-time classic that I still to this day even go back and play as well as like, you know, the Gran Turismo games every now and again um, so yeah really awesome it kind of deviates a bit there um, but again I only had a PS1 did not have a PS2 that was really difficult to get hold of um, but before long before we know it you know I do get my hands on a PlayStation 2 thanks to a friend again of my parents who was selling one um, I picked that up and the first game I get for that can you guess yeah it was Gran Turismo 3 now, I remember booting this up, and it was on an oval track, and I believe it was one of the fantasy ones, and I remember booting the game up and being in a uh, the Supra, the Castro Tom Supra, uh, just playing arcade mode and being absolutely blown away by the graphics of this thing. It was the most insanely realistic thing I think I've ever seen. At that point in time, I did not think gaming graphics could get any better. The step up from a PS1 to a PS2 was absolutely immense, and even to this day, Gran Turismo 3 is such a good looking game. And again, the same thing happens. I absolutely for months on end play this game. Now, it was much more limited in comparison to really any other Gran Turismo. I believe there's only just over like 150 cars and something like that. There was a ton of events and stuff, and it was still very good in terms of its gameplay. Um, but from there, you know, the kind of want for a new Gran Turismo was kind of, you know, building up inside me obviously so there was another game i believe it only came out in europe and possibly japan this was gran turismo concept uh, tokyo to G geneva 2002 so very soon after i got gt3 i also picked that one up again that was a very limited game kind of along the lines of something like a prologue uh, but just a bit bigger um, a lot of people in kind of like the united states and that might not know really what that game is um, but yeah essentially it was just a bit more gran turismo mainly focused around concept cars so it was like sort of the origins of vgt cars before you know vgt cars were really a thing it was really awesome some massively futuristic cars i remember like the gt40 concept being in there i believe on the cover the gtr uh, concept was on there so you know it was just really awesome you know these futuristic cars and even some weird little pod cars as well um so again gran turismo 3 and gran turismo concept kind of became the main thing and then kind of the rumors started coming around about gran turismo 4 and i remember this game being delayed so many times i used to buy the official playstation 2 magazine and being absolutely excited by seeing these screenshots and then just to for it to be you know announced as um you know delayed Laid and such so years passed i'm still playing those two games you know i was young i wasn't the best at them um so i got many many hours uh, and years really out of them um and then obviously gran turismo 4 eventually dropped and straight on release day ps2 this thing was absolutely incredible even to this day the amount of content in that game the fact that it even had stuff like hd support and that was just absolutely incredible for a playstation 2 game so that was the next big thing and well that thing absolutely lasted me for years upon years just seriously gran turismo 4 if you've never played it go back get yourself a playstation 2 and just play it honest to god that is such an amazing game now, this is really where Gran Turismo kind of, you know, fades out a bit. Obviously, the new generations of consoles, uh, the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 were kind of on the scene. Well, in fact, it was only the 360 that was. 
obviously the PlayStation was quite a bit behind that. It didn't come out till later. Um, so I actually picked up an Xbox first. And obviously at that time, kind of, you know, online gaming and Xbox Live and such really started to take off. So I kind of got into that scene for a while. And that was actually my introduction to the Forza games. So I remember playing Forza 2 online, drifting about with people for, you know, a long, long time. Um, so there was nothing really on the Gran Turismo front. Obviously, we'd heard that Gran Turismo 5 was in development, and I believe that got, again, delayed by quite a bit. And I think, if I'm right, came out around December 2010. But obviously, at this point in time, I'm kind of on Xbox, you know, playing you know Call of Duty and all that stuff, um, you know, as a, as a teenager. And, um, you know, kind of just waiting for Gran Turismo to release before I even attempt to, you know, save up all my money to go and buy a PlayStation 3, which at the time were really difficult to get a hold of. However, I did continue to save my own money and come the release day of Gran Turismo 5, I remember picking up a console and picking up a copy of that game. And from there, well, I went back to PlayStation, still played my Xbox and stuff, um, but kind of that obsession with Gran Turismo kind of came back. So I do what you usually do, I install the disc, jump into Gran Turismo 5 and I remember at first after all the hype around this game and this, this being the first proper next gen Gran Turismo game being well very disappointed. Now obviously I had not touched the prologues or anything like that for this game so my introduction to next gen Gran Turismo was actually Gran Turismo 5 and there was this whole kind of debate around premium and standard editions of cars. I believe there was like 200 kind of premium editions which looked absolutely stunning and then you kind of have the ported over versions from Gran Turismo 4 and whilst there was like over a thousand cars in this game you know it didn't all you know not many of them felt very next gen but don't get me wrong that game the amount of content in it with the a spec and b spec and stuff i played for absolutely a long long time and um, i believe for about a year and a half um kind of on and off like i remember playing it for months on end taking a break coming back having a really big you know long couple of months with it again uh, before that kind of you know just faded away and uh you know I, I believe it was like 2012 was the last time i properly played that game um, and at that point, the you know the want for another you know Gran Turismo game was coming around. Then Gran Turismo 6 gets announced. Now I was kind of expecting this to be a launch title for the PlayStation 4s. Obviously, with that kind of console coming up in 2013, I want to say, um, and that being the release of Gran Turismo 6, a lot of people kind of expected them to kind of launch that title on the consoles. Um, so yeah, it was very strange when it actually came out on PlayStation 3. But don't get me wrong, it was a very, very good game. Um, again, ton of cars, more kind of premium cars. It looked better, it played better. The suspension, I remember on that game, they changed up kind of the physics of it and it felt absolutely amazing. Um, but in terms of, you know, playing the game, it was kind of a strange one for me. So I played that game on release. I got all the collector's edition and stuff like that. And then very quickly I'd realized, you know, I had a lot of free time then. And uh, yeah, I kind of beat the whole thing. Uh, very very quickly uh, all the events that were in there and then you know from there I was like well there's not really much for me to do so I kind of you know sort of turned my back on Gran, Gran Turismo 6 very early in its life I didn't really you know pay much attention to it after that I mean I believe it did get quite a few updates and stuff um, but I never really you know went back to it in that kind of sense probably up until you know about 2015 so it had already been out for a couple of years at that point and then I kind of got hooked again um, on the on the PlayStation 3 but I kind of dropped at a weird time because I did obviously move to the PS4 and I think that's what didn't help the fact that all these next gen games were coming out and uh, you know obviously Gran Turismo 3 uh, Gran Turismo 6 being a PS3 game you know it kind of just took away the want to do it like I said eventually I did go back but yeah Gran Turismo 6 very weird one but definitely one of the best ones in the you know history of Gran Turismo I absolutely loved that game especially after going back and playing it again I really you know began to appreciate that game for what it was it was a massive step up from um, Gran Turismo 5 even if it did kind of take a, a few steps back. 
Now, obviously, the PlayStation 4 has been out a while, and we've not really heard much about a Gran Turismo game. Obviously, the trailers for Sport then eventually dropped, and they, that, I believe that kind of got hold off for quite a while. It felt like an absolute eternity till that did come out. However, eventually it did, and again, you know, me being me, I bought the Collector's Edition and jumped right in. Now, I knew what I was getting with this game. I knew it was kind of multiplayer only, um, but I didn't expect it to be that bare bones. So I played a ton of GT Sport, getting all kind of the, the uh, circuit experiences and stuff done, all the sort of side missions and stuff done very, very quickly um, before obviously like diving into the online for probably a good few solid months of just kind of racing, I believe at the time, like... Um, I think it was Kyoto Driving Park was one of the main ones and they kind of used to change the races every day. I um, remember the GTR being massively popular in Group 4 and uh, yeah, I really kind of played quite a bit of that and then kind of like life got in the way and such. So to be honest, I kind of, you know, went away from gaming for quite a while um, and didn't really kind of, you know, touch any really games online i was kind of busy working and such um because obviously i've grown up by this point um i had a job i had a family to look after um so yeah it kind of was it was what it was and then uh, about two years after launch something like that i think just under two years i finally went back and obviously it had been updated massively uh, and uh, yeah i remember getting hooked into it again for another good few months before kind of putting it down um until probably just before gran turismo 7's release and picking up gt sport obviously in the hype of you know gran turismo 7 coming out and being massively excited um so yeah uh, gt sport it whilst it was an absolutely awesome game and i did put a good you know couple of hundred hours into it um did kind of feel like it faded away a lot more quickly than the the main series titles um from there obviously march 2022 rolls around and i know gran turismo 7 is coming out and at the time i was in a terrible place i just lost my job we just obviously me and my partner lost a baby um and i essentially put myself in debt to buy this game um but i kind of had a plan i knew i you know i had a lot of history of gran turismo i was you know very passionate about the series and i knew what i wanted to do i knew i wanted to kind of you know base my youtube channel around it and you know here we are today <laughs> which is strange enough obviously um you know we're what eight months into gran turismo 7 and i am more than thankful than ever really uh, for that game releasing and kind of you know you guys as well you know for changing my life like i'm now in a place where my first ever game you know the franchise i'm able to now sit on the internet and talk about it and have a platform with it it's it's absolutely incredible so you know it, yeah it just goes to show look if you are passionate about something you can just do anything you want you know i guess that's kind of the moral of this story you know in my, in my journey i know it sounds really strange talking about grand Turismo 7 and talking about things like that but this was something i was always intrigued with throughout my whole life and it's always been there for you know with me and grown up with me really and um, so to see it you know get where it is now is just absolutely awesome to be able to talk about it is absolutely awesome and massive thank you to each and every single one of you whether you like my content or not i'm you know look i'm not here to please anyone not everybody's going to like my stuff um but yeah thank you to everyone and i just thought i'd do something a bit more light-hearted and kind of just give you my overall journey and experience with gran turismo so that's going to be it for today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, turn notifications on, all that good stuff. Check out the description for all my links in there. And I will see you all in the next one. Take care, guys. Peace.